Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hi everybody, I'm going to be talking about Shazam, which came out in 2019. I really enjoyed this movie. I have a fondness for the character. I grew up a big fan of the TV show. Now, these TV shows don't hold up in a sense, mostly using the same tradition of the old Superman show. But it was color, it was the 70s, and it had the theme of the young kid and meets the gods and gets his powers. And it was a really imprinted itself in my head at the time. Uh, there was a spin-off show, I think, from that called like Isis. It was some female Egyptian. She had powers. In any case, I grew up and I remember one of the first times I ever controlled a dream was man, maybe my early teens to some if my memory is correct. But the dream was it was a big fight. It was like the streets. Everybody was fighting in the streets. And my friends were there and everybody was, it was just a big chaotic mess. And I ran on top of a car and it was one of the first times I could remember focusing in the dream. And I yelled out Shazam and I was struck by the lightning and don't remember much after that, but it really imprinted itself in me. So getting to the movie, it was directed by David F. Sandberg. And I think he did a pretty good job and starring Zachary Levy, Mark Strong. Now, I, there are flaws in this movie, but I think it's so much fun and it really went for a direction I was pleased with. So I think it works really well. If I'm going to give certain movies like Cop Buddy movies a pass, um, I'll put a fun value, I think it's really good. And for the most part, I think DC's come up short, but they shouldn't be shit on for the brand itself, although they've had problems with the Shazam character going back to its roots with being sued over the name Captain Marvel. I enjoyed the comics when I was young. There was something really defining about a child who can turn into a superhero much akin to Superman in that sense. And I love the family aspect of it, which surprised me in the movie because there will be some spoilers, minor plot reveals in this, but it's been a year now. I think it came out in April, April 15th or something like, or April 5th of last year. So we're real close to the year mark. And I got to see a good copy again. And me and my friend were talking about it and how much I enjoyed it. I'm starting to role play again some superheroes in D and D, and it's just a really good movie. It's fun from beginning to end. So, I looked at this movie and there was a part in it that surprised me because I didn't get it from the trailers. I, I was scared of the trailers. I didn't like the suit. I didn't like the way he looked in it, and I wasn't sure of the tone it was going for. I don't mind its roots and its origins in a kid getting powers and that innocence being shown in the character. So I, I enjoyed that in the end, but the trailer was a little, it was like leaked footage bef before it. So I was a little nervous. So the suit actually looks good. It's, it looks okay in the movie. And there were editing problems for sure. But at the end of the movie, or near the end, when he realizes he can't beat the villain, he bestows the power to his fan. Well, he considers his family now, which are orphans at a orphanage or a, a foster family. And they become the Marvel family, like in the comics. And I had a tear came out of my eye, not a bawling, crying, but... It's hard, like, even the first Spider-Man, which has flaws, the Sam Raimi one, 
at the time I was so happy it was done with respect and um, heart and talent that, I, you know, the little nitpicks you can let go and it really means something to me. And I think this did that. It decided to go on its light tone, stuck with it. And when he bestows the power to the family and they have to work together, it was like being a kid again. So for that, as my bias, I love this movie. Now, looking at it critically, I think it has some editing jobs and some dialogue problems. A little, couple little things are obvious and the, I don't know, um, harp on things too much or repeat methods of the humor. But overall, my fears were put aside. The suit looked pretty silly, but it works in the movie. Um, they use a lot of the electric aspect and maybe for the newer versions of Shazam that works out better. But it's a nitpick. You know, slight nitpick. But I was happy with the actor, the portrayal. The villain was okay. Now, I love him as an actor. But there was just something a little dry about the performance. Or, you know, it focuses so heavy, heavily. And I think that's the formula Marvel suffered from from time to time. That the villain wouldn't be the focus. And, you know, wouldn't get that the weight it deserves. So, okay. But it's just so much fun. And it was like one scene that I think they had a couple of missed opportunities. And I'm not, I don't let them, um, you know, get in my way of enjoying a movie. But if I had to list things down, the list would be a little larger than most movies I say I love. But when you do the things right, you commit to it, and you don't pull back it works it works very well something about the colors work on the screen the relationships work for the most part and i was really impressed with the actors they got we can go through the list but he's in an orphanage and you've got different um family members or or uh, uh, family members but that's part of the theme of the movie He's got different kids in the house and two parents or guardians. And they all have various ages and different personalities. And it really works well. And even when there are moments when the kids get involved a couple of times and it works where in some movies it gets redundant and gets silly. So Maybe they work. it worked so well with some of the formulas that they tried it in other areas, and that's where I nitpicked those things. But it's got a good beginning, middle, and end. It hops on things a little bit, but in, in a way, in my mind, I, I think I would never think I lived in an age where Marvel's got like 19 movies, whatever it is. DC's got a handful now. For the most part, they're fun. And even, I might even do the Batman v Superman because I watched the director's cut, well, I don't know, it's like the third cut already, trying to fix this movie. And it does fix some of the flaws. But DC should get a little bit more props. Wonder Woman's amazing. And Shazam is great. I, I just have so much fun with it. I watched it again and I recognize the little things that bother me here and there, but it didn't matter. It's just... In a way, it just brings out the kid in me. And I think that's its purpose. It's that connection because some people are like me when I was a kid. Even to this day, probably to some extent. Think about superpowers and what you would do with them. The responsibility, the dangers of the powers. So I remember when I was a kid, in my dream, shouting Shazam. And when you watch the old TV show, I say kid, he looks like a teenager. He's got, you know, maybe even an adult at that point. But being a kid, tying a cape around my neck, wearing superhero underoos, running around the house, 
always with my imagination. This movie's a winner. It's definitely uh, one of the good ones and made by DC. So thank you. I'm going through a lot of the movies now. I'm thinking about TV shows I'm watching. Taking this time of uh, isolation and distancing. Hope everybody's doing good. There's been a couple of, I don't know, peripheral things going on that have uh, impacted things. Not too much. And for me, it's not personal in that way. So my condolences to those that have been lost and we'll keep moving on. Be careful. I'll see everybody next time.